Hello everyone. I recently finished a new project, and on this project, there's one thing I kind of want to make a video of, which is how to turn an extremely simple shape of a dress into this more complex ornamented shape. I want to talk about the workflow I used to get here, and I figure some of the steps could be useful for your guys' project as well. I have written down a basic flow chart in this image in Photoshop, and uh, you're welcome to pause it and read it through. But basically, we're going to use Maya, Mari, Houdini, and eventually ZBrush. We are going to jump back and forth between Maya and Houdini a couple times. Let's start with Maya first. Inside Maya, I just built this extremely simple shape using very simple extrude function. Uh, I want it to kind of look like an outline of um, kind of fishtail kind of shape dress. Um, the thinking is for the silhouette of the entire object. Uh, the top back piece is very wide, so I do want the end of it to flare out a little bit just to balance that out. This part should be fairly simple and then also uh, subdivided it. Doing this step, once I finish the piece, one thing I need to do, this is for Houdini. First, I did a very simple UV for it. I just expanded it out. Uh, I did make sure that the top line is a little bit more straight and the bottom is a little bit more straight. But for these guys, I try to relax them as much as possible to keep the original size of the geometry. And once the UV is finished, I make sure that the cut of the UV, this is the cut, which I put in the back so that it's not so front and center. We can hide it a little bit. Has a cut in geometry as well. This step is mostly for Houdini for wrapping later. And I will explain later why. Um, I did it once in another project, which I explained why, but I will explain again. Once this step is finished, I'm going to move this geometry into Mari. Um, I'm going to use a photo projection to lay out exactly what this pattern is going to look like inside of Mari first. This is basically more of a good design process. Inside of Mari, what I did was I import this geometry that we just saw in Maya. It has a UV as well, just like the UV I showed you. And I started to just, I put just like a basic paint layer and I start to kind of mark out the general design idea of this geometry structure. Because everything on this object is extremely symmetrical, for this part, I want something a little asymmetrical. I figure we have some bigger flower pattern here, bigger flower pattern here, and then we have some more flowy type of geometry spread out in between them to eventually form the entire shape of this. I did that mostly in the UV view because it's just simpler and also turn into 3D view just to make sure that it looks good in a 3D shape. And the back does not come together at all, but because I know that I won't be showing a straight kind of back view of the geometry, we're mostly looking at from the front and the side, so we never will be able to tell. There's so many branches sticking out that it looks pretty complex that we won't really be able to tell that they actually don't connect in the back. I just didn't care about it very much. So once this step is done, what I did was this is the merge layer that it is, this is on. I kind of lowered the op opacity of it just so that I can still see a general flow of the design. And I put on a new merge layer and put a new paint node. This is where I'm actually going to project the final shape that's much closer to the final geometry for this object. So if I just turn on the opacity of this, this is the final projection where I follow the general flow of the design. I know once all the projection is done, it will kind of have a nice flow and design to everything. And to do that, I did collect some stencils. I collect stencils of flower shape that I was able to use. I collect stencils of uh, branches and I'm basically just projecting them like little by little. 
kind of paint a chunk of it and paint another chunk of it. And Mari is really good with this kind of complex projection uh, because I can use luminance. Oops, keep going back. Because I can use luminance, which means I'm going to paint the white part of my stencil. And here I can choose to use either black and white to decide the final color that's been projected. Um, here it's very simple. I'm just painting a simple black and white mask. So I'm using luminance, using the white part of my stencil, and also I want to paint it white. That's why the color is also white. Um, so it would just go like this. And using stencil is great because it discards the black part. When I say using luminance, it would completely disc discard the black part as if it's transparent, which means I can keep moving this and keep painting it and merge them into something complex. Even though here, what the stencil I have is not actually a lot of things. This is just a few branches just three kind of simple branches and I have one that's uh, just basically one branch. I don't really have that much variety, but because of the stencil, I can kind of make my own variety with just different things rotated and merged together to get some more complex stencil happening. I'm going to clear what I just painted here and show you the final result. If I just turn this completely off. This is the final projection. And I also look at it from the 3D view to make sure that it also looks good in 3D final wrapped version. Once this is projected, I exported this texture out. And inside of Maya, I assigned that texture to this geometry, which then we should be able to see that projection. The next thing I want to do is I want to retypologize this using this projection as a guide. But for me, you could just retypologize using this, then you can skip the next Houdini step. But instead, I think it's much faster to project on the flat plane. So what I did was, next part is Houdini. So inside of Houdini, first I import the geometry and then I subdivided it. This is more for later. So for this part, the subdivision actually doesn't matter. But we can use a visualization UV tool to visualize this geometry as in its UV form. So if this has a UV, it will turn into UV version of the geometry. So I just view this and it's super small for some reason. It's not size wise, it's not one to one. So if I just focus on it, so we get this UV version of the geometry and I exported this geometry out to use inside of Maya. So we're going back to Maya now. So here I have a group here that I put all the kind of flat UV work inside of because it's super tiny. If I just hide this and focus on it, this gonna hide this first. Okay. So this is the flat version of geometry. I assigned exact same material that I use for the skirt onto this. So now we got like a geometry version of this. And this is the version I'm going to use to retypologize. Uh, I find that it's a little bit faster. Just do it on a flat plane. But if you chose to do on the shape of the dress, you can skip this Houdini step as well. Actually, you can skip Houdini altogether if that's what you prefer. Here, we're just using very simple quad draw tool. I just make this thing live and I start to draw the geometry. This is the geometry I drew. So I basically just using quad draw to lay out all the geometry. It's a, a more tedious step of the whole process, but the technique wise is very simple. Once that's finished, this is the geometry I got from this. 
and I'm going to send this back into Houdini and do the wrapping inside the Houdini. Sending this back into Houdini, I have uh, another little clumps of notes here to do that. Here, mostly we're using the point deform. So if I look in, look at that, we take the flat version, which is this uh, we had before, and we take the shape. We connect the flat version into the center uh, slot. And then we also have the shape version. This is when the subdivided version will come in handy because this geometry I imported from Maya, every one of these points will have need somewhere to land to be able to wrap it onto this shape. So if I subdivide it, then they create way more points for that shape to be able to maintain its original shape and doesn't have to stretch it into somewhere else just because it needs a point to land. So using point deform, I plug this pattern into the first slot. The second slot is the flat version and the third slot is the original shape version and it will try to wrap this. Uh, using this as information, this two has to have the same points. That's why I cut the back out so they can have the exact same amount of points, which you can see here. That's the point it have, and here also that's the same amount of points so you can wrap it properly. So basically wrapping this using this as uh, information into this shape. So by the end, we got this. It's not super high resolution, but at the same time, I don't want to subdivide it again. And I'm using peak to kind of push it, inflate it a little bit more to push it a little bit off um, the shape itself. Uh, the reason why I do that is because I want to add thickness to it. So if I use peak, you will see it inflate just a little bit. And then I exported this out of Houdini using a rope geometry output. And that's the one I brought back into Maya again. That's the one I exported back. I don't think I have the single-sided version anymore. This is the version. This is the version I exported back, and then I just select all the faces and extrude it. That's when I got my final geometry with thickness. And the uh, one last thing I did to it is just ZBrush because this was way too flat. I have tested this with material, it just does not look right. So the last thing I did was just bring that geometry into ZBrush and do some sculpting with it. And I don't have ZBrush open, but this is basically the decimated version of that sculpt. Um, I imported the decimated version in here just to see if everything actually works together. And I think I kept in my original geometry. I did not use DynaMesh at all. So that's basically the final geometry. And then I just have to UV it and we can send the UV version into Substance Painter and using this higher resolution to bake uh, our normal map for that. So here is the final version. The geometry is the geometry that I showed you and the normal map is coming from the ZBrush sculpt that I did inside of ZBrush. That's basically the whole process. We can go over it once again. So first inside of Mari is build the geometry. I did a UV and I make the cut in the back. Uh, Mari part is mostly for design. The exact structure of the detail of the complex part pattern that I wanted to do. And inside of Houdini, I produced the UV version of geometry so that inside of Maya, I can retypologize and create the pattern version of the flat geometry. And then I wrap the pattern back onto the original shape inside of Houdini. And then I use the wrap back into Maya to build the final geometry. And then the sculpt, and then I brought everything into Substance Painter for the final texturing. I hope that process is helpful, maybe give you a few kind of ideas of for some of your own projects. Uh, you're welcome to try out some of the steps and uh, I will talk to you later if I have something else I want to talk about.